Alrighty, fellas. So, some of you gays. <laughs> Alrighty, fellas. So, some of you gays. I said it again. Keep this in the record books. Because watch this. I'm going to go do something and then I'll fucking be dialed. Fucking get one of these fuckers in and then we'll fucking be able to. Alrighty, fellas. So, some of you guys may know me from my Wilson Media days, which was my first agency that I took from after dropping out of university to a bit under 25K a month. And it was a grind. It took two years. And the two years fucking sucked. Some of you guys may know me from Outwork Media, which was my lead gen gym agency that I started after kind of figuring out the basics with agencies. And I skilled that bitch from zero to 25K in four weeks through cold email and looms. Some of you guys may know me through Relentless Success Club, which has been my main focus over the last 12 months. And we've been able to service hundreds and hundreds of different agency owners and generate millions and millions of dollars for them through our proprietary methods and frameworks. And some of you guys may know me after you guys saw me take Mortgage AI, a lead gen agency, in the mortgage space from zero to 36K publicly on YouTube while documenting the entire process. But what none of you guys know is that recently I've been working privately behind the scenes with my partner here, Noah, on a brand new agency that we've taken to reach over $200,000 in just the last month alone. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to tell the origin story about how we started this agency and the struggles that Noah went through, which is going to be super, super relatable to a lot of the struggles that you guys are facing in a day to day process, how he overcame them, how I came into the picture and how we scaled this thing from just two young, dumb, broke kids trying to figure out life to being where we are today. So I would encourage you to engineer your environment to eliminate distractions so you can focus and extract potentially life-changing value out of this video. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of how we actually blew this agency up, I'm gonna let Noah tell the origin story so you guys have a little bit more backstory and context as to where we're coming from and the foundations that we had set so you guys can kind of see how you relate to where we were when we first started. So three short years ago, I was nothing more than a university student. I was actually at the best business school in Canada. I had a full ride scholarship and it really just wasn't for me. I was waking up every day feeling like I was living somebody else's life and it was eating me away on the inside to the point where I was literally at home every night coming home, arguing with my parents saying, this is not what I want to be doing. I can't be showing up to school every day. I need to be doing something else that's more aligned with my mission. Coming downstairs, going into the basement, crying myself to sleep. I was there sitting in the basement wondering what kind of man cries himself to sleep living somebody else's life, regardless of if it's his parents or not who are pushing him to live that life. So the solution that I had come up with was drop out of university, start an agency, because at the time I was already doing freelance videography, photography work on the side, making anywhere between four and $10,000 a month, depending on how much contract value I picked up that month and really take that to the next level in a way that was scalable and didn't rely on just me having to put the inputs in to get the results and the pay out of the work that I was putting in. What we ended up doing right out the gates was building a solid team of six to eight people all working for free around the idea of building this agency to a point where we could all support one another and really build a family of team members that could work together, have great experiences together and take the business to the next level. This was super important to me because growing up as an only child, it was me versus the world and my friends were my family, my mom and dad were my family. And I wanted to be able to build a business that I could also call my family and be able to have and share a variety of amazing experiences with them, ideally traveling around the world, being able to share experiences that is reserved for the top 1% or top 0.1% of the world population. And that really was the mission of this agency to start. And over a six to 12 month period, I'd be honest, I can't really remember how long it took or how fast it all happened, but we managed to take the agency from zero to about 15 to 25K a month, again, depending on how many freelance contracts we picked up on the side. But the majority of our MRR was built up of social media management to clients where we came in, we shot content for local businesses, we edited it, created the social strategy, wrote the copy, published it all, and then sent reports to the clients at the end of each month, letting them know how effective our content strategy was at growing their accounts. And part of those clients were a variety of now Michelin star restaurants, here in Vancouver. We had been working, I believe, with five different restaurant locations, two dealerships, which are Ferrari and Maserati, as well as a couple of other local businesses. If you're in the local area, you know, Kit Smoked a Snack. It's an absolutely legendary store. It's where you get Zins. It's where you get all the Zins. It's one of the only places you can get white foxes and Zins here. Shouldn't be saying that, should I? But the reality was that I was still doing almost all the work and we had a team of great guys. The problem was that across six men and women, including myself, we were unable to really support full-time wages for all of us, as well as be able to clear a decent margin at the end of each month. And what ended up happening was I had to take a lot of the load onto my own back of the shortcomings of where our team was unable to provide work because they were focused on other side gigs or other full-time jobs or university work, because it just wasn't something they could take 
make a leap of faith into yet. And as a result, I found myself sat in my garage at my parents' house where I had my office set up and in the basement that I was sleeping in when I originally dropped out of university, pulling my hair out of my head for two reasons. One, and less importantly, because I felt like I was doing a lot of work and there was just no way out. I felt like we were capped at 10 to 25K, 15 to 25K a month, and there really wasn't a way to get to that next level. And more importantly, I felt like the family that I was building was being torn apart because I wasn't able to provide the business opportunity and the client base that was required to get them on team with us full time. Worse yet than that was the fact that one year after dropping out of university, I was still living in my parents' basement, still requiring my parents to help me survive. And that was part of the reason why I dropped out in the first place was to be able to provide for my family. And one year later, there I was still leeching off my family as a 19 year old kid feeling sorry for myself and also feeling like my family was being torn apart. And this all just stemmed back to the fact that because the business wasn't operationally efficient, at the end of the day, I was only coming home with anywhere between one and $2,000 in my own pocket, which really in this city is not even enough to put food in your mouth consistently for 30 days, let alone afford rent or be able to help your parents out in situations where they might need it. And it all kind of came to a boiling point, a precipice. And I remember it was in the middle of summer and I was sat in the middle of my garage and I just received a message from a client absolutely just flaming me for our lack of quality service delivery. We just turned a client the day before, lost $2,500 in MRR. And I was watching my screen with these messages popping up and just having a full-blown anxiety attack, knowing that this could be the last nail in the coffin. I didn't have it in me to take my business to the next level. The family that I was building, the family I was trying to support probably wouldn't end up working out in the long term. And I took a step back. My dad was sitting beside me and I just looked at him. I was just like, dad, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to do this. I feel like I'm failing. SMMA is not going to work for me. I feel like I've just put the last year of my life into this. I completely wasted my time. And this business model just doesn't work. I feel like I'm gonna have to go back to university and figure it all out. And to me at that time, it was like facing death face to face. I'm looking at the future of my life. I go back to university. I realized that my entrepreneurial mission had completely failed and I'm going to live the rest of my life looking back at today, realizing that I'm nothing more than a failure. I'm going to have to live by the rules of the system for the rest of my life. Now, fast forward, that wasn't what ended up happening. What did end up happening was we ended up firing 90% of our clients on recurring revenue. I stopped picking up freelance contracts and we took our MRR or our top line monthly revenue from 15 to 25K down to 3,000 a month. I put the agency on autopilot. We serviced our one favorite client and I started focusing on building businesses myself with other partners. The family that I worked so hard to build fell apart. They all went back to university, they started their own businesses. And once again, it was just me staring the mission of building a business to the point where I could build a family and support my family dead in the eye from zero. And with that monster staring me in the face over the next two years of my entrepreneurial career, we managed to scale two businesses to a high seven figure and low eight figure run rate over the course of 12 months. I managed to find myself an amazing partner and a friend who you might come to know as Michael, who is now a partner with Dylan and myself. And Michael himself had gone through a very similar journey and managed to work on a number of very large accounts as an advisor, consultant, and media strategist, as well as scale his own business to a low to mid seven figure run rate year over year. Michael and I ended up meeting and crossing paths in our adventures as entrepreneurs and something just clicked. He was the exact opposite personality as me. He was the exact kind of person that I look for in a business partner and just felt like he was the right kind of guy to bet the farm on and potentially rebuilding a family with. And Mike, I know you're gonna watch this video and you're gonna say, Noah, that sounds super sus, but honestly, man, when you're business partners with somebody, you're getting married to them. So. I'm here to stay. And uh, if you want to divorce me, you know where to find me. So one of the things that Mike and I realized in reflection into the businesses that we had helped scale from quite frankly, almost zero every single time to high seven, low eight figure run rates was that it was almost the exact same lead acquisition, demand generation, customer acquisition strategy time and time again. Obviously there were some slight changes in positioning for product and offer, but what we started to realize is that we really had figured out a way that was niche agnostic, industry agnostic, that we could almost plug and play into any kind of business and help to get the same results that we had for the four businesses that we had built on our own. At the time, I still had this agency running on autopilot in the background, servicing this singular client. Business was still set up. We still had some systems in place. We still had all the software set up. And Mike and I looked at each other and said, why don't we just take the same businesses that we used to scale our own businesses and help to scale the people's businesses that are coming to us month over month and asking for our assistance. Because at the time we were doing pretty amazing numbers of the businesses that we were running ourselves. And it was starting to catch attention. People were coming to us saying, how are you doing what you're doing? Can you do it for me? And every single time we looked at them and just said, no, we need to keep a singular focus and focus on what we're doing right now. And this was an opportunity to kind of shift that focus, bring these companies together,
together and take the teams within those businesses, pull them out, bring them into a hold co and have them start servicing not only the businesses that we run so that we can be more efficient and also have more time on field for our team members, but also use those same team members to help service and provide value to our colleagues and the people that were asking for our help. And that was right around the time when we met Dylan. So throughout that one year period, we had started to get to know Dylan closer as friends and the relationship kind of evolved to the point where, you know, we were running our own businesses and every day, every time we talked, it was, hey, here's where you can improve on yours. Hey, here's where you can improve on yours. And the relationship kind of evolved into this more mutual consulting relationship. Maybe you can explain a little bit more on what that looked like. Yeah, so as I began to hang around Noah more and more and more, I wanted to get more and more information on the actual agency side of things that Noah and Mike were doing at the time because, you know, obviously I'd seen the success that they've had growing their own you know, you know, the micro home businesses and the e-com businesses and the other, you know, companies that they were building kind of in-house with their team. But I was curious because that's obviously my bread and butter, the agency game as to where they were, where they were at and what they were doing with their agency. So I asked them straight, I asked them straight up. I was like, well, how many appointments do you book on average a, a month for your agency? And he looked me dead in the eye and he said, I think we do about like two to four appointments a week. And my fucking jaw dropped. I was like, what are you guys fucking broke? <laughs> And that was when that was when I noticed an opportunity. That was when I really saw like my my said, oh shit, there's a real opportunity here because these guys have service delivery dialed. These guys uh, are able to legitimately change companies' lives and literally take them from you know beginner to true enterprise value based companies. And with the track record and experience that I've had to be able to actually you know scale the agency side of things and you know quickly set appointments, acquire clients, close clients, and then you know set them up on service delivery. That was when we began to discuss the initial partnership. Now, the thing is though, is we didn't want to start another SMMA. We didn't want to start another agency that was going to sell two to 5k a month retainers and, you know, just kind of hope that we get good enough results. So our clients didn't churn. We had ambitions to take this agency to a multi eight figure run rate, and we weren't going to be able to do that through the traditional SMMA model, we'll call it that. So that was when we put our heads together and we just started to develop a new business model, a business model that was able to position ourselves as a true partner in our clients' minds. We were able to acquire them quickly and charge five to $15,000 upfront revenue share deals without them batting an eye because they saw us as true partners. And lastly, a business model that we were gonna be able to build once, have it completely systemized so we could fuck off and live life on our own terms. And the result the result of all this was to start a high leveraged marketing hold co, which has allowed us to gain equity in six and seven established businesses without them even batting an eye, which was essentially us leveraging our existing marketing and sales experience to gain small amounts of equity in established six and seven figure companies, all the while getting paid for the value that we were able to add to their business and the actual work that we were doing for them. And once we had this plan in place, we went back to the basics of the OKR and mapped out exactly how many cold emails and what we needed to do in order to hit our KPI targets. And after calculating the numbers, we set up a robust cold email strategy in which we used niche segregation. So what this means is that we identified five to 10 different ICPs that we could potentially target. We segregated these ICPs into individual lists, and then we created custom cold email sequences that directly targeted the people that we wanted to speak to. And within 30 days of launching our campaigns, we took this agency from booking two to four appointments a month by chance to booking five 10 and we've even had 30 plus appointment days. And now with this influx of lead flow, our sales team was able to jump on these sales calls and make absolute no brainer revenue share guaranteed offers on the front end with a full money back guarantee. So we could begin acquiring clients on the front end like clockwork. And as we began to service these clients and deliver on the results that we promised because we put simple stipulations in the contract that so long as they did X, Y, Z, call the leads on time, et cetera, et cetera, we were going to be able to generate the results that they originally started working with us for. And yes, obviously some clients fell through. Obviously some clients did commit, but at the end of the day, those weren't the clients that were meant to be in the long run. However, the batch of clients that have succeeded with us so far, we were able to go to them after our initial term of working with them. And instead of saying, hey, let's sign up for another three months, we were dramatically reduced our retainer and we increased our performance and made the equity proposal so we could begin acquiring these companies. Because the true value in an agency isn't the service itself. It's not being able to charge one, two, three, four, five K a month for a retainer. It is the value that that service is able to provide for the company. So, so long as you have a good service, which by working with Noah, 
that was already taken care of. Instead of charging, you know, 2K a month on retainer, we were able to make clients hundreds of thousands of dollars and then receive commission checks based on the attributed value that we were bringing them. And the one thing that this business model does better than any other business model that I've ever run before, whether it's a service-based business or a one-off product service-based business, is that the value that we provide to clients is not the same as an agency. Agencies charge month over month and they try to keep you on retainers for as long as possible so they can get the maximum amount of lifetime value out of each one of their clients. This model is very different. It's proposed as a partnership, it's fulfilled as a partnership, and there's really only money being made on both ends so long as there's a mutual value being provided. And the real win-win comes from the fact that both parties, the provider and the receiver, are incentivized to build maximum enterprise value into the business that's being serviced. So at the end of the day, you don't come away with all the pains of being serviced by an agency, which is I don't keep the IP in my company, I don't keep the enterprise value in my company as a result, and if that agency churns, I'm fucked. And more importantly, the customers and clients that you service with this business model won't feel like just another agency client. You will feel like they're your partner, they will feel like they're your partner, and as a result, you don't end up with the same issues of clients coming to you saying, I know that you guys are trying your hardest with me, but it really just feels like I'm another one of the 25 to 100 clients you guys service month over month. And I feel like I could get better results if I just did the same things you did in-house. And the icing on top is that as a service provider, no longer are you spending your time building value into other people's businesses and really at the end of the day, only getting value out based on the amount of retainers that you're able to build them for. But you're really able to build your own enterprise value with an exitable business model by gaining equity in companies that you help to grow. So overall, compared to a normal agency, this is the golden goose. And so that right there is how I was able to build my fifth agency to over $200,000 a month. Now, if this opened a new perspective to you, if you maybe got some ideas of how you could be implementing this into your business, I want you to stay tuned because over the next nine months of 2024, we're going to be documenting exactly how we are building this agency, how we're signing the clients, how we're servicing them, how we're gaining equity, how we're forming these revenue share deals and how we're building true enterprise value to make a fuck ton of money together. We've just signed a lease for our videographer to come move into the exact same apartment that we're living in right now so he can be following us around, showing you guys all the behind the scenes of how we're doing this so you guys can dish the traditional churn and burn SMMA business model and jump into a new vehicle, a vehicle that has the opportunity to take anyone, even if you don't have superior marketing knowledge, to over a million dollars a year in just the next 12 months. So the next action step for you to take right now is to First of all, subscribe to Noah's channel. It's gonna be the first link in the description because he's gonna be sharing the work that he's doing to build this company. In addition to all the content that I'm gonna be sharing as to how we're doing this. And last of all, stay tuned because there's gonna be a brand new channel coming out of our entire team working together in order to truly document the value for you guys.